During my Halloween marathon, I found out that a game editor from Retro Gamer Magazine had posted online the passing of a great video game artist and overall contributor to the gaming landscape. Initially, what I found odd was that Sega had never mentioned any of this, even though the artist had passed away back in May of this year. No big news in the video game world was made until fans noticed a tribute on their Mega Drive Mini 2 console and was later confirmed by Sega producer Yosuke Okunari. Two questions quickly came to mind. Why did Sega keep this under wraps? And two, why wasn't this shared sooner with the gaming community? Well, it turns out that Sega was just respecting the wishes of the family for privacy. And that's understandable. With this video, I want to shed some light on Rieko Kodama. Who was she? What did this individual contribute to the gaming community? So, let's take a look at who was Rieko Kodama. Born in Yokosuka, Japan in 1963, Rieko was a huge fan of video games from a very young age. She was an inspiring artist when she entered college, but was not yet fully committed to a specific degree. She did ultimately decide to go with advertisement. However, during the early 80s and with the rise of video games and arcades in general, Rieko became intrigued at the idea of working in the video game industry and having a chance to put her artistic skills to work towards video games. And this was a huge risk considering that in the early days of gaming, it was widely known that the gaming world was mainly populated and mainly oriented towards males. She did eventually get a job at Sega in 1984. And while she thought she would be working on advertisement only since that was her background, ultimately she did find herself learning how to create sprite graphics through Yoshiki Kawasaki, a video game designer. One of her first contributions was designing characters for the arcade game Champion Boxing, which was released in 1984. During those early days, since Sega did not allow the name of programmers and developers to be shared or advertised, she used the name Phoenix Re on credits, or is it Phoenix Rai? Her talents would be noticed and soon, she would find herself working on multiple titles at once. These included Sega Ninja, Alex Kidd in Miracle World, Quartet on the Arcade and the Master System, Fantasy Zone 2, Cillian, Hoshiwo Sagashite, Spellcaster, and she also worked in a smaller capacity on such titles as Miracle Warriors, and Black Onyx. When Sega decided to come up with a role-playing game to compete with the likes of Dragon Quest, they put together a team to come up with a title for their Sega Master System that would do just that. Kodama will go on to serve as the main artist on the team that created Fantasy Star, the greatest RPG of the 80s, hands down in my opinion. She would use her love and inspiration for the Star Wars films when creating the characters of the game. 
The sci-fi setting was mixed with that of a fantasy setting to give the game a very unique feel for that time. She was not only responsible for the character designs, but for the background art, the overall 2D environments, and even NPCs. The main character of Alice was created by Kodama specifically since she felt that RPGs needed something different as far as main characters went. She went on to work on character designs for Phantasy Star 2 before directing the last Phantasy Star entry on the Genesis, Phantasy Star 4, End of the Millennium considered by many to be one of the greatest RPGs of all time before she moved on to supervise the releases of Phantasy Star Collections and the Phantasy Star remakes on the PlayStation 2. Now here's a quick look at some of the 16-bit titles she worked on during the days of the Sega Genesis. Welcome to your doom. After directing Phantasy Star 4, she went on to work and direct Magic Knight Ray Earth for the Sega Saturn. And also worked as producer on the Saturn exclusive title Deep Fear. Do not make a sound. Stop all construction work. I repeat, do not make a sound. This is not a drill. She would ultimately go on to work for the newly formed Sega WoW division and helped in creating the successful Skies of Arcadia RPG, a game that was originally designed for the Saturn but moved to the Dreamcast after the Saturn failed to live up to expectations. She served as producer and art designer. This title proved to be a very nice surprise RPG hit for the newly created 128-bit system and would ultimately make its way onto the Nintendo GameCube.
Game titles such as Project Altered Beast and Seventh Dragon are also under her vast resume. Rieko Kodama has one of the most impressive resumes spanning back all the way to the mid-80s. Her artwork and character designs alongside the ability to combine genres were simply unheard of during the early days of gaming. Her contributions spanning many classic franchises is something to be respected and remembered. Deservingly so, she went on to garner critical acclaim from colleagues, game editors, and writers across the world. She has been called the first lady of RPGs and in 2019 went on to receive the Pioneer Award for 2018 during the Game Developers Choice Awards for contributions in art, directing, and producing some amazing titles under the Sega banner. Rieko Kodama was a huge part in creating some of the most memorable characters and games you and I have probably played at many points in our lifetime. Who knows how many out there were inspired by her works and contributions to the gaming community. I hope with this video, I can bring a little more awareness to talented individuals such as Rieko Kodama. She was a major pioneered enthusiast of the gaming world, one whose works will continue to live on after her passing. I will finish by saying this, Rieko Kodama, thank you for all your contributions, wherever you are. With that said, keep watching, keep playing, and as always, take care of yourselves.